Just four of you, Kochi. Just four of you. Guru, a very warm welcome to Padmaji and Arnavati who are joining us all the way from LA. And I'm sure more people are going to come in, but a few words of introduction to start our satsang that, uh, you know, we had the good opportunity of having both Padmaji and Arnavati a few years back on Guru Purnima. And we fondly remember the uplifting satsangs and chantings we had together. So we are very happy to have you both with us. They are both Ananda ministers serving at the South Bay Center in LA. And Padmaji is also a light bearer. And uh, we, without uh, you know, me saying many more words, I would like to hand it over to both of you. And uh, welcome to Kolkata. Thank you. Thank you. Unmuted? Yeah. So very happy to see all of you. Good evening. I know it's uh, 8 p.m. Uh, in Kolkata there. Uh, happy to see and fond reflections of uh, the wonderful satsang we had about 18 months back. Yeah. It and was really nice. Yes, seeing some was, of those faces are very, very uplifting. Just yeah, to be it was such a beautiful gathering of souls. And uh, of course, the, the, the gastronomical delight to follow was also uh, wonderful. But it was a beautiful satsang. And we are both from Kolkata. And so this is, this is a connection. It's a special you know, connection uh, that it's, it's, it's always there. Yeah. Uh, so it is our tremendous joy and a blessing to be with all of you. Thank you for giving up your precious Saturday evening to be at the satsang. Um, so, that. <laughs> and it is truly, it's a beautiful, beautiful um, opportunity for us to share Master's um, joy, Master's love with all of you. It is always a blessing whenever we get the opportunity. Yes. So, um, so just to give you guys a sort of idea of the flow for uh, the evening today. Um, so we will start with meditation. We'll pray, we'll chant. Um, we will chant quite a few chants uh, together. I know Zoom is a little difficult for the chanting together part. So probably you guys will all have to keep yourself muted, unfortunately. Uh, but please chant along. Chanting, as we know, is half the battle. It brings up the energy, fills our heart with uh, God's love and devotion. And then we'll take that uh, inspiration into uh, maybe about 10, 10, 15 minutes. We'll see how it feels, about 10, 15 minutes of uh, meditation. And then we'll come out of that with an affirmation. And with that, we'll go into, we'll share our, our little inspiration, whatever we have. And then we'll open it up um, for any question and answer session. If anything we, we, we can answer, we will be very happy uh, to answer. Then at the very end, again, we want to end it with, we'll end with a, a peace and harmony prayer that uh, Devi Ji does all the time. We love that. So we'll share that. And uh, we'll have a Divine Mother's healing as well. And we'll end our evening on that note. So, so, so shall we start, Diti, or should we wait? What do you think? I think we can start the chanting and people will come along. The space is open for all the registrants to keep joining. So they will okay. come along. Okay. Do we have enough people? We can start with the prayer. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. We have 10 participants here already, so we can start our notice. Okay, thank you. Again, it's a full circle for us. We are from Kolkata, Master is from Kolkata. We are in Los Angeles and you are in Kolkata. So space and time and everything has been completely dissolved as we tune into our own spiritual selves, our higher selves. So please keep that in mind. Um, sit up straight, close your eyes, focus at the kutastha, the point between the eyebrows, Feel God's love, feel Master's blessings coming in through that Christ consciousness center, eliminating each and every cell and vibrating with Om and joy 
as we reach for our own inner divine truth into our own infinite consciousness and bliss. And please uh, pray with me. Divine Mother, Divine Mother, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Friend, Beloved God, Friend, Beloved God, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, Baba Ji Krishna, Baba Ji Krishna, Lahiri Mahasaya, Lahiri Mahasaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Beloved Guru, Beloved Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda Ji, Paramahansa Yogananda Ji. Saints and sages of all religions. Saints and sages of all religions. Beloved friend and guide. Beloved friend and guide. Swami Kriyananda ji. Swami Kriyananda ji. Humbly and joyfully we bow at thy feet. Humbly and joyfully we bow at thy feet. O Divine Mother. O Divine Mother. Bless our satsang this morning. Bless our satsang this morning and evening. And, and evening. Be with us. Be with us. Bless us. Bless us. Help us attune to thy will. Help us attune to thy will. Help us open our hearts to receive your grace. Help us to open our hearts to receive your grace. And guide our thoughts. And guide our thoughts. Guide our wisdom. Guide our wisdom. And guide our will. And guide our will. So we can enthusiastically. So we can enthusiastically. Be. Be. Channels of your love. Be channels of your love. Joy joy and freedom and freedom we are thy children divine mother we are thy children divine mother naughty or nice naughty or nice we are coming home we are coming home hold our hands hold our hands and take us to thee and take us to thee in infinite joy in infinite joy in infinite freedom in infinite freedom and infinite bliss and infinite bliss oh peace. peace amen, amen. We'll have some chanting. Please chant with us. Hopefully, everybody is able to hear us okay. <clears throat> yes, Arnabji, we can hear you. Thank you. We'll start with our invocation to Brahma, him to Brahma, Brahmanandam. Mm -hmm.
will take this chant into meditation. Receive me on thy lap, O Mother, cast me not at death's door. Receive me on my lap, O Mother, cast me not at delusion's door. Kole tule ne ma kali, kale tule vishne.
Let's all sit up straight. Chins parallel to the ground. Palms upturned at the junction of the thighs. Feeling the energy of the chant in our hearts. Feeling our hearts open. Ready to receive Divine Mother in our hearts. Visualizing Master meditating with us. As you meditate, listen to these words of Master from this verse of eternity. Dance in me thy dance of infinity. O Divine Mother, I have learned to love thy dance of destruction. For I see now that what it destroyed is my own ignorance and folly. Thou hast shattered again and again with thy war dance of destruction, my fragile case of bones and flesh, and consigned it to crematory flames. Thou hast done so willingly, smilingly, to show me and everyone that our souls are ever free and cannot be burned or broken. With thy mercy, thou hast stripped away, sometimes seemingly with harshness, but always with loving purpose, the countless hardened, mud-encrusted covers of delusion that coated us. I appreciate now thy dance of devastation, Mother. Together, let us cremate my every desire, frailty, weakness, and finitude forever and ever. I'll join thee laughing in thy dance of evil's destruction. O oh, Mother, since nothing more is left now of my finiteness for thee to destroy, Dance in me thy dance of infinity and of cosmic love. <clears throat> we'll meditate for about five to ten minutes. We'll come out of the meditation with an affirmation together. As you meditate, please follow your breath. Feel the softening of your hearts. Visualize light entering your body through the door of your heart, illuminating, joyfully vibrating with Divine Mother's love. Try to visualize energy rising up in your spine. magnetizing each and every cell and aligning them, tuning them to the Christ Consciousness Center at the point between the eyebrows, the seat of our liberation. For those of you who are new to meditation, don't try too hard. 
feel everything that's going on in your mind. And slowly try to detach yourself. All the thoughts. Focus on your breath. If you feel tension in any part of your body, visualize healing energy and get rid of that tension. Relax completely. Feel expansive joy in your hearts. mind starts wandering just gently and lovingly bring it back to the point between the eyebrows without judgment and without any reaction those are part of God's play as well Realize endless light, and joy within yourselves. Keep sitting up straight. Imagine your spine is like a ramrod. That's the magnet that connects us, aligns us and attunes us to the divine, to the truth. And pull your shoulder blades towards each other to open the heart as if like a thousand petaled lotus it's opening up to receive God's grace to 
gratitude, joy and humility. Keep following your breath. Keep visualizing light as I read to you from Affirmations for Self-Healing by Swami Kriyananda, the founder of our Ananda Church of Self-Realization, direct disciple of Paramahansa Yoganandaji, our master. Positive thinking. As we think, so we become. And as we think, so our lives and circumstances become also. From the divine consciousness come answers to all our questions and solutions to all our problems. It is in lower consciousness that confusion reigns. Think positively in everything you do. For in that way, you help to attune yourself to the divine flow. One who is inwardly in tune with grace finds all things harmonious and beneficial being attracted to him. Positive thinking combined with the sense of divine attunement is never presumptuous for it draws its power not from the ego but from the consciousness of God's joy within. Now we will affirm together, first in a loud voice to capture our subconscious and bring all the energy and focus it within ourselves. And then gradually as we go deeper in a normal voice, then in a whisper and then uh, silently. And with every step, we increase our focus, we increase our attention, we increase our concentration and really tune into the vibration of these wonderful affirmations. So please repeat after me in a loud voice. My outer life is a reflection of my inner thoughts. My outer life is, an inner, is a reflection of my inner thoughts. Filled with the joy of God, Filled with the joy of God. I express his joy and harmony in everything I do. I express his joy and harmony in everything I do. Now in a normal voice, my outer life is a reflection of my inner thoughts. My outer life is a reflection of my inner thoughts. Filled with the joy of God. Filled with the joy of God. I express his joy and harmony in everything I do. I express his joy and harmony in everything I do. Now in a whisper, keep your eyes closed, focus at the point between the eyebrows and with even more energy, try to tune into the vibration of these affirmation. My outer life is a reflection of my inner thoughts. My outer life is a reflection of my inner thoughts. Filled with the joy of God, Filled with the joy of God. I express his joy and harmony in everything I do. Express his joy and harmony in everything I do. Now taking the meaning even deeper and silently, repeat after me. My outer life is a reflection of my inner thoughts. Filled with the joy of God, I express his joy and harmony in everything I do. My outer life is a reflection of my inner thoughts. Filled with the joy of God, I express his joy and harmony in everything I do. Please pray with me silently. Problems cannot exist, Lord, wherever thou art near. Give me strength always to hold thee in my heart. Problems cannot exist, Lord, whenever thou art near. Give me strength always to hold thee in my heart. Good evening, everybody. Again, welcome. Thank you for having us. 
it's just so wonderful, you know, in this world of uh, COVID and uh, pandemic and the way we have been um, cocooned in our own homes, we are unable to see our, you know, guru bhais, people that we uh, consider our spiritual family or near and uh, dear and loved ones and try to keep our head straight with all the news that's out there. You know, we have so many people that we know who are suffering, people who have passed away. So many, you know, heartbreaking uh, news uh, around the world. But these are the moments that give us strength where we are together, where we can commune with each other, where we can feel the harmony and the resonance of our spiritual connections and truly live the sense of you know um, togetherness even when uh, we are not physically with each other so it, probably this was divine mother's plan to really give us that insight into time and space being uh, illusions and what really matters is us how we attune to her how we feel her love and connect with each other and in the process strengthen each other and then together serve humanity as much as we can like a bulb that is becoming you know stronger and stronger its wattage is increasing and spreading the light uh, wherever we can and it is so much joy just to be even preparing for this uh, morning or evening for all of you. So just the fact that we are giving this service is also service for us. So we are deeply grateful and thankful for the opportunity. So at Ananda, you know, we are all from Kolkata. So Anondo, Anondo Mane Anondo. And uh, our motto is joy is within us. And that is the essence of what we do. Amra uh, Bhuktita Dina, we share inspirations, which we call talks. We don't, uh, <laughs> you know, go into sermons because I personally don't think I'm qualified to do that. Uh, we can only share what gives us this, you know, tremendous and sometimes, you know, uncontrollable sense of joy that we have. And today's topic, as um, we have beautifully and very relevantly uh, decided is uh, the power of right company and satsang. So here we are, we are in this uh, satsang together. So I would uh, request you as part of, you know, sharing the inspiration together to close your eyes for maybe 30 seconds and visualize a beautiful garden. With lots of bright, beautiful flowers and birds and think of master or divine mother, mother as the gardener, as the Mali, basically giving us the soil in which uh, that garden is uh, flourishing. And what's in that soil? What is master giving us? In that soil, you know, just like we have fertilizers for our gardens, the fertilizers are all the aspects of God. It's kindness, it's compassion, it's attunement, it's joy. It's bliss, it's music. As uh, Swamiji said, if you want to understand Ananda, if you want to understand me, listen to my music. So music and sound and wisdom, these are all the ingredients in that soil. So the more we are able to extract that uh, uh, fertilizer or the nutrients from the soil, the stronger and more beautiful this garden will be. And what are these flowers? These flowers are our souls. That's why we are here together. And that's the satsang. So you can always imagine a satsang like a beautiful bouquet of souls sprouting in a wonderful garden of spiritual ingredients that we are constantly nourishing. And like Jyotish said uh, past week when we had the minister's retreat, that in this world of you know, virtual communities, you know, our roots have to be really strong and deep. And that's where we actually go into the soil to get the nutrients. And then we can branch out and partner with each other and then build this beautiful community. 
that we call our spiritual community, our friends and family. You know, we live in Los Angeles for the past uh, 26 years now, and we do not have, and we never had any idea how strong, deep, and genuine uh, these uh, spiritual brothers and sisters that we have uh, can be. It has been a life-changing experience for us to just be associated with people who are in tune with master's teachings, with meditation, uh, with Kriya Yoga, and constantly trying to serve as much as we can with our little uh, you know, time and uh, humility and every opportunity that we have to serve Master and Divine Mother through serving people. So in this community, Master's teachings is the bedrock and the foundation, that's the soil. And we are like little magnets, you know, as we come into a, a room or just like, as you know, magnets can attract iron filings and we have all learned that in, in school and they align us in a particular way. So the more we practice Kriya, the more we practice meditation. I know some of you may not be uh, Kriya Bans or some of you are at, all of us are at different stages of uh, learning to meditate. You know, we are lifelong learners uh, and we cannot call ourselves uh, like, I know, expert in meditation. I, I, it's really hard to say because only when you are one with God and you have reached a stage of uh, nirvikalpa samadhi. And uh, that is when we can plan. And that's where all the great masters and the avatars are. We are all trying to get there. We are not quite there yet. But every effort, every step we take in the right direction is helping us magnetize that. So as we magnetize, we come together. We are able to attract other people and align them. That helps us in the way of uh, reinforcing our own uh, spiritual path and what these satsangs do. These are like uh, recharging your battery. Just like you have to recharge your cell phone every night. Similarly, we have to recharge our soul's batteries so that we can come the next day with full of energy, full of enthusiasm, full of humility, full of gratitude to keep serving people. And we reinforce that spirit. We reinforce that strength. Uh, within each other as well. You know, Swamiji uh, talks about uh, intentional communities and he has written a couple of wonderful books. One is called, A Place Called Ananda, the whole formation of how Ananda and all the trials and tribulations that they had to go through, it's not easy. And there's another one called Intentional uh, Communities, what it needs to happen. So the two foundation principles, so master talks about the nutrients in the soil, but there has to be a structure uh, for communities as well. It cannot be uh, free floating. Uh, there's a wonderful story that Swamiji talks about this huge rock that exists on the border between two properties and both the property owners with their own ego, they want to get rid of the rock so that they can actually build a fence between the two, two properties and they buy two donkeys. Uh, they tie a rope around the rock and guess what? The donkeys are trying to pull the rock in the opposite direction. So nothing's happening. The donkeys are getting exhausted. The owners are getting frustrated and the rock is not moving. So when we try to do things in an aligned way, in an attuned way, things happen. When we don't, we just waste energy. So it's important to follow these two principles. And what are those? Very simple. One is Jata Dharma Tata Jaya. Where there is virtue, there is victory. So we have to always think of what we think, what is right. So Swamiji very fondly called it uh, dharmocracy versus uh, democracy. So when we are together, we follow a sense of a dharma. And the second one, which is what really we can see that all our spiritual leaders actually are living uh, in uh, their guidance towards us in their leadership that we follow is People are more important than things. That is such foundational for our Ananda way that that way, you know, we don't really come across as giving a, a sermon from a pulpit or, you know, we don't come across as, okay, here are people who are here to just um, sit and listen to my, you know, words of wisdom. No, we are here to share. We are here to share inspiration because that's the only way we feel the joy within ourselves. 
And then there are rules. You know, you cannot just have everything that goes uh, helter skelter. But Swamiji was not a big fan of rules. He called it very differently. You know, rules. We when we see rules, it thinks of a box, right? We think of bureaucracy. We think of structure. We think of all these kinds of things. But he had a wonderful way of converting that same thing into a positive uh, 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 representation, which is like the affirmation we read. And he called it creative common sense. So just think of you know how when we are in a decision making process, and all of you are in the process. We all are too in Southern California, uh, trying to you know really rebuild uh, post COVID and how that will uh, look like. So what's very important is to understand how are things flowing. You know, are we doing the right thing? Are we actually tuning in with each other? Are we feeling the harmony with the, each one of us? Are we feeling what is right for everybody else? So that we are not only serving master through ourselves, we are serving each other as well. So I keep giving this uh, little example to our daughters. We have two daughters. Is that you know, if in, the, in a room of 10 people, everybody is thinking about himself or herself. So, and let's say each unit is one. So you have 10 units, right? Versus if everybody is thinking of the remaining nine, guess what? We have 90 units of uh, good positive thinking. Well, that's simple math for you. So that helps in rebuilding all these uh, sense of community. And as COVID has told us that, you know, we feel this yearning, this lack of satsang which creates the yearning to keep meeting with, with people. And once we have that yearning, that has no boundary, that has no physical constraint, that has no limitation. You know, we are able to tune into all of you and feeling the joy right now. And we are, I don't know, 13,000 miles away. It's evening there. It's just, you know, getting to be morning uh, right here, but it does not matter. Time does not matter. Space does not matter. It's the attunement uh, that matters. So that is what uh, community and satsang uh, is primarily the way we uh, see it and the way master has talked about, you know, a global uh, fraternity of uh, communities all independently kind of attuning within themselves and serving God. And, you know, his prediction is it will spread like wildfire. And I think, you know, COVID and this pandemic is really reinforcing in us what's truly important in life. You know, what are the simple things that are really priceless? And imagine when we try to have clarity around uh, those kinds of thoughts and we are on that bedrock of the foundation of the ingredients like I talked about, the soil that Master has given us, the songs and the teachings that Swamiji has interpreted and made it so lucid for us. You know, it is you don't have to be a minister or you don't have to have these robes and you don't have to know a lot of you know difficult you know hymns and sermons and sanskrit words and all of that it's really simple you know it's like a master said god is simple everything else is complicated once we get to that point you know and we try to attune that sense into the way we approach each other in our satsang in our community joy is unbounded so that would be my little inspiration. And we try to live that here in Southern California and couldn't have asked for anything more in our lives, uh, you know, looking forward. So I'm personally, as soon as I can, <laughs> would retire and just completely dedicate uh, everything that I have in serving master through any community that we can form here through our satsangs and through our services. So thank you very much. And we'll have, uh, now I'll turn it over to Padma. She'll talk about uh, the spiritual aspects of uh, community and then we'll have a, a Q&A followed by some healing prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Arna. Um, so as, as I was listening to him, he used the word resonance and that's what uh, I have been also thinking about. You know, we teach, um, I'm a physics teacher, so I always tend to bring in these science uh, concepts. But when I think of satsang, um, I think of resonance. And what is resonance? Well, the physicists think that uh, resonance is actually a marvelous thing uh, of nature. We find that if you bring, um, you know, there's a there are two guitars that are tuned to the same frequency, 
and you are strumming one of them and miraculously the other guitar starts strumming on its own and they not only strum uh, on its own and they start to uh, vibrate they vibrate much louder than they would have if they were just doing it by themselves so it's like it gets magnified and you know um, soldiers when they're walking on a bridge so this happened I, I, I want to share this with you so this is uh, Tacoma Narrows Bridge in the state of Washington here in the US it's like the far um, north western uh, corner of the country and this was not that back you know it was like 30 years back uh, this bridge was made this um, beautiful bridge hanging bridge and the wind was blowing and uh, it was just only 45 miles an hour. And that resonance that happened, the, for some reason, the engineers didn't think of calculating the natural frequency of the bridge. Every object has a natural frequency, including us. And I like to think our hearts also has a natural frequency that we can tune to. And so when we, with our, with our hearts all tuned to the same frequency of master, of divine mother, um, we are resonating. And that bridge resonated so much that it broke down. That huge bridge serves as a great example in architecture of what not to do. But, uh, but resonance is also the very core of uh, music. I'm sure all musicians, they know, uh, if we didn't have resonance, we wouldn't have any music as the air resonates in that sound board, that's what creates the, um, the music. And so is with us, we are exactly, uh, you know, human beings, we, we feel it, you will notice the one thing that I'm missing a lot, I tell all my friends here, is uh, meditating together, I really miss that. Um, because when we meditate, like physically meditating together, that's a whole different thing than meditating uh, over Zoom. Because when we are meditating together, it actually builds up that, that energy. It's bouncing off each other. And when, the, when and the, the key word is frequency, being in the same frequency. And I heard Arnav also use that word harmony. So what happens when we are not harmonious? Exactly opposite of resonance, dissonance. So it has been seen actually, the energy waves, they cancel each other out when we are not in harmony and the result is disastrous. And so in a satsang, in a community, um, harmony is perhaps one of the most important thing, one, one of the most important things. Um, we will be doing a peace and harmony prayer. We know the world is suffering right now. There's so much of unrest, there's turmoil. We are going through a big change and any change we know has a lot of turmoil. We are going into a higher age and that's pretty clear. You look around you, uh, I mean, just look at us today, right now. It's a sign of a higher age. We have broken down the, 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 the border walls of, of 15,000 miles of space between us. And, and we will usher in the higher age, but it's not going to happen on its own. So right now, um, I was reading uh, Swamiji's article. He's talking about how, you know, the darkness, this is, a con this is God's word. There's a constant fight between light and dark. And because of Dwapara, the higher energy age, even the dark force has been energized. And so they are really powerful. And we are, what we are seeing is a hand-to-hand -hand combat right now, hand-to-hand -hand combat between the light and the dark. And, and now is the time also to, to grow deeper within. Why? Because as Master has promised us and has showed us that how to stand unshaken amidst the crash of breaking worlds. Now, if today is not, we're not hearing the crash of breaking worlds, um, and it, some of us even think um, that things probably, unfortunately, will get a whole lot worse. We haven't seen the worst yet. Um, more is to come. And if that is true, how are we to stand sh shaken, unshaken amidst this crashing world? The only way out is God is the divine. There's no other way. Um, you know how um, 
when the when the flood comes everything gets washed away and there's just one truth pillar that is still there and that's god and master used to say make make friendship with god in your good times so you will have that pillar that you'll have that support that inner power in bad times and so I would say now is the best time. And also I feel like, um, like Arnav was saying, the pandemic has, I don't know about you, I can speak for myself. It has simplified my life a whole lot. It has re re kind of taken away everything that I didn't need, but I still had to kind of in routine. And because, you know, things that I don't say no to, they've always been in my life, they've dropped off. Um, as far as my job goes, most of us are working from home. By, by God's grace, we can do that. That gives us more time. Um, socializing is zero. Wonderful. This is like Divine Mother has put a seclusion on us, worldwide seclusion on us. And what do we do with that extra time? Utilize that to make friend with God. Um, to go deep within us, now is the time. If you are meditating, meditate even more, longer deeper if you if you're not meditating now it's a time to start to meditate learn the techniques um yoganandha ji has brought so much that even if he's he in fact he said this i've given you guys so much if you can just do only one percent of what i have given you and do it truly you will find god and think about that we have a master I mean, I still thrill at that promise that he has given us for the first, when I heard it for the first time, I know I, I had goosebumps all, of my, all over my body. He said, yes, you can know God. You can know God. I, tiny me, I can know God. And then another experience that I'll share with you is this was way back long, many years back. Um, I had gone to Ananda village and it was uh, I think spiritual renewal week, some of you may have heard about it. It's a beautiful gathering of, um, you know, Ananda souls from all over the world. It's a beautiful week uh, full of inspiration, music, creativity. And there for the first time I heard Swamiji say that, you know, in your meditation, when you, um, when you feel that bubble of joy, you feel that, that love, that is God. And I was stunned to hear that. That is God. So when we, in deep meditation, we are feeling that inner joy, that divine joy, that touch of divine love in our hearts, or maybe you're feeling perfect peace, you're feeling bliss, master's bliss, or maybe a touch of it, whatever, how, however little, we have to hold on to that experience as God. We are experiencing God and go deeper with that inspiration and take it deeper and deeper and deeper. And God is endless. And so we will never tire. Like Swamiji says, there has never been any saint uh, or a master who said, you know what, I did that. And, you know, it was good, but what's what's next? That never happens. It happens with everything in life, except God. We could be the best in any profession. We could have reached the pinnacle of success in our lives. We can have, you know, we could be the wealthiest person in the world. We could be, we could be having the perfect relationship, but nothing compares to the taste of love, of the divine love, of the divine. Um, I always think of this, you know, how we were, we were, it was early in the morning and um, it was dark outside and the light here was so beautiful and glorious and bright. But what happened when the sun came out? There's no way we can compete with sun's light. There's no way Arnab has, has a garden that he tends to, uh, we both tend to, but he, his, is the, his is a tiny little lawn. So we are in Southern California and we are in a, it's getting from bad to worse in terms of the water. So he takes a lot of effort to water the, his, his little tiny patch of green lawn. It's like a luxury here. And, but when the rain comes, he says, you know, I cannot make the plants happy as the rain does. And I said, how can you? It's divine, it's nature. We cannot compare our little tiny selves with nature. And that is the power of God. 
And that is the only truth that there is in this ever-changing world where everything can change on a dime. And this pandemic has shown that to us. This flimsiness of life, this ephemeral quality of this world where, you know, this, this person is there one moment and not there the other moment. This has happened to so many people we know. And so what do we depend on? Where do we get our strength from? Where do we get our courage from? There's only one answer. And thank God, we are ever grateful for master's presence in our life. Maybe he was preparing us. You know how they say we souls, we pick our times to incarnate. Um, and that's what life is, right? We all understand that this life is a school. And there's no point in, in complaining, oh, how difficult the curriculum is, because guess what? You have chosen the curriculum. You have chosen the school. And perhaps um, Master has helped us pick this difficult time to come and incarnate because we are going to learn from it. This is the time that the harder the curriculum, the faster we learn from it. Um, so let's see. Um, the other thing I quickly want to touch on is the power of Maya, power of delusion. Let us not, um, let us not underestimate it even for a second. You know, I'll share with you a story uh, here. So this really dear friend, she's still my dear friend, like my older sister, a beautiful person, a beautiful devotee, dedicated. She's so serviceful. And there is an aspect that causes just disharmony. She cannot, there's just one person that causes her to become disharmonious. And everyone around her can see that it's in her. It's not in the other person, but she's in delusion and we keep praying for her. And I know when the time is right, that that veil of delusion will rise and she'll see the truth for itself. But you know, seeing her, I realized how powerful Maya can be that it can affect a person like her. So let us be very aware of Maya and the fact that the environment is powerful, much more powerful than our own willpower. And Master had said so. So think about the environment that you are spending. I know we are all homebound, but what are you surrounding yourself with? Have pictures of master all around you if you don't have that already. That itself has a magnetism. Take note of what music you're listening to. What is your times getting used up with? What are you reading? What are you watching? Who are you spending time with? If you want to be a pianist, you're going to spend time with you know, expert pianists, right? If whatever we want to be better at, we have to spend time with those people. And, and that's where our satsangs comes in. That's where the community comes in. That's why, where you come in. And don't ever underestimate yourself as a source of light. In fact, um, you know, most of you are, everyone knows Devarshi, who is a very dear friend of ours. And um, I think either, whether it was um, Arnab or me, myself, I don't remember, it was, we were hesitating, like, Devashi, should we, you know, are we, are we ready to, I think it was a talk, a satsang or something, like the service. Can we, are we ready for this? Are we in tune for, enough for this? And he said, you don't have to be perfect to serve. It is the service that makes you perfect. It is the service that makes us perfect. As we willingly, whatever little we can, we become willing instruments of that light that we believe and love master as and we don't have to do anything outwardly just by being true instrument being okay today i'm going to share his love with everyone i meet that's my goal the best i can i will share his love with everyone i'll put my heart out and i'll share my love my master's love with everybody you are being a lighthouse you're being a channel of that light and the more we be that, we are willingly, we are being that, the more we become the light itself. That is the truth. That is the, that is the best way we can um, become more and more like the light by allowing it to flow through us. So let's pray for people because God knows people needs, 
people need prayers these days. Let's do healing prayers more at the end of your meditation if you're not doing it already. These are all different ways. Um, think of others. Put yourself aside for a moment, even if things are tough for us. See what you can give others. In giving, only we can receive. Um, I'll end with this, this example of uh, Swamiji. You know, um, Swamiji, this was at the beginning of Ananda. And he felt like people are not learning how to give. Like they would expect Swami to um, bless them. You know, it would be customary for Swamiji will be ending a satsang by blessing everyone. And then one day he said, uh, friends, I am not going to bless you. You are going to bless me. And everybody was stunned. How are we going to bless you, Swami? And he said, yes, you can. You can bless me too. And so everyone prayed for Swami, raised their hands and blessed him. And in that act, they felt Divine Mother's blessing flowing through them. So we have to give to receive. This is one of the basics of the teaching, Master's teaching. And give in any way you can. And that's the way you will receive. And as you become conscious lighthouses of Master's energy and vibration, know that it is aiding in this hand-to-hand -hand combat between the light and the dark. It is your little role that you can play. And it is important. Um, I don't know if you've heard Devi um, share her story, beautiful story. I think they were visiting Israel and they were at that, you know, that border uh, area of huge conflict. They had um, jets flying uh, uh, overhead and she felt as they all, you know, made a little circle, satsang, held hands, joined their energies together. And as she was praying, she felt that there was this this huge angel of light and a huge angel of darkness. And they were fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat. But as they prayed, it strengthened the angel of light. It strengthened it. And yes, our powers, our, our prayers are very powerful. So friends, let us all unite our energies together. Uh, continue to unite our energies together, feeling empowered, going deeper within ourselves first, making that, that God contact individually first and bringing that inspiration out and living it and living it actually. So the divine can flow through us and um, empower us. And one day we will all be one in that light. Time to open up for some questions and meet some of our friends. Thank you, Arnabhi and Padmaji for the wonderful, inspirational satsang. Um, friends, please unmute yourselves and ask questions. This is our time of interaction. Rohan. Rohan, we can't hear you. Is that better? Yes. yes. Good morning to you, Padmaji and Adnavji. Uh, thank you thank for the opportunity. Uh, may I ask, is there a peacock around? <laughs> yes. Yes. Unfortunately, yeah. amazing. Yeah. No, that's yeah. that's great. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we have wild peacocks running uh, all around our place, and believe it or not, I say it's it's all my doing because when I was young, I had actually wished, oh, it would be so beautiful. I think I must have seen that uh, Shatrutra's movie Shonakela, and I always thought, oh, it would be so beautiful to have peacocks. Lo and behold, we have peacocks, but they are such a nuisance in terms of if you want to do gardening. So I do a lot of vegetable gardening and they will not let you. They'll come and destroy everything, but they are beautiful to look at. Yeah, so we have peacocks. <laughs> Great, That's, they're beautiful to even listen to. It's amazing. <laughs> so I, I, just to... question. I was wondering the same thing and I was thinking this is like Rishikesh because when you go to Rishikesh <laughs> in the morning, you actually wake up to the peacock calls and want to go near the river, you know, and be there yeah. watching the sunrise yeah. and reminded of that with the peacock calls. 
like in the background. <laughs> well, well, at least they are of some service and joy, which is good to good to know. And more than that, also with the rising sun, I think they, it was a beautiful satsang. I have mm. no question. I just wanted to take the opportunity because uh, it can get difficult. But had it not been for you know the wisdom that you share, and uh, it makes it so much more easier to deal with. Thank you. I honestly thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. It's our it's, it's our pleasure. It's, and you know, one thing that uh, Devarshi said one time that uh, the first time I met him, I was bringing him back. He was supposed to stay with us, and I he was he's a quiet person. And I said, you know. I think I know you for it's a long time. This doesn't appear that I'm meeting you for the first time. And he was such a contemplative, quiet person. And he said, it goes both ways. So, you know, most of us have known each other in previous lifetimes. And we have been on this journey for many, many lifetimes. So it feels very comforting to again, get to know each other and to be so open and uh, share, just feel this connection and sense of joy and expansion. So thank you very much for your nice kind comments. Anybody else? Any question or anything you guys want to share? Any inspirations for us as well? I can ask a question. So my question is, sometimes there are situations when I feel that maybe I'm being misunderstood and this is a kind of becomes a little bit of a helpless situation because I cannot, even though I'm trying to express myself, that the person on the other side is not being able to come from the same perspective. So in these situations, what is the best way to um, go towards a resolution which is harmonious and you what, what is the way? Sure. You know, whenever, um, like you say, a disharmony appears, I think the one of the best ways, there are a couple of things we can do. One of the best way is um, when we pray for that person um, with all your heart. And sometimes it gets difficult um, because, you know, there is so much, um, because each one of us has, a, has our own reality. And our inability to see each other's reality is what that creates that dissonance, right? We all are good meaning, well-meaning people, but just our, it's our inability. So praying that we are able to see the other person's perspective and because we need a roadway, otherwise, you know, we don't communicate. Uh, frequency basically so as we pray as we pray for that person deeply opening that person holding that that person up in the light I think we bring in divine mother's grace that somehow that frequency dissonance disappears I've seen this happen many times like sometimes it'll be like it feels almost like a miracle like what happened this person is a different person next time I meet him or her so I would say continue to hold that person in light and uh, pray not only for that person, but pray that I can understand that person. So I'll be able to get a channel through which I can communicate. And sometimes communications don't need to happen verbally. It can happen just without any words, but in, in, in frequency, in vibration. So maybe you, you think like maybe my words will put this person off just feel in the presence, hold the person in front of you and open up the, your heart and just beam out your love to that person's soul. And then there will be an unspoken communication and things will be resolved. I want to add uh, to what she said, just to kind of reinforce the point. So in autobiography for Yogi, you know, there's a chapter on the cauliflower thief and there, you know, they talk about we all being radios, right? We are constantly transmitting and emitting signals. So that's basically what it is. As we open up, we're able to communicate. Practically, I have actually used this at work. So as, you know, Diti, you mentioned in that uh, write-up, I work as a senior manager at Boeing for the past 25 years. And I used to have one group and they are based out of uh, St. Louis and I'm in Southern California. And you know, Midwestern people are very conservative people and they were having a difficult time to accept a brown-skinned immigrant to be their boss. 
And uh, I was on a call with uh, one of them, Eric Martin, and uh, he openly said that, that you know, uh, I don't feel comfortable. I actually prayed for him. And this, I'm, I've not met him, right? And I'm praying for him. And after intense praying, the next time I'm talking to him, he sounds easier. I can't explain. All I'm doing is just channel what I'm learning through our path into that. And then I fly out to St. Louis, maybe a few months later, I'm meeting him. It's not the same person that I spoke the first time. So something happened. So these are real examples of where we can put master's teachings uh, in, into practice. And it's always about people are more important than things. You know, we keep that and what's happening, trying to happen, what's right. And I, I think, you know, it's a, it's a constant journey. It's a mm -hmm. constant struggle. There is no perfect answer. So it might work today. And, you know, two days later, you're again back to square one. It's like, you know, yeah. taking the test till you ace it. So right. once you ace the test, you know, it will go away and some other test will come. So. You know, the, another thing that gives me a lot of comfort because life is full of, you know, these hurdles and discomforts and um, not opposite of harmony. And again, I, so Devarshi is such a light in our life. He said, you know, Padma, whenever you're feeling any discomfort, think that you're burning karma. And that brings in such a different perspective, doesn't it? Like, okay, this dissonance that I'm having with this person, something good is happening out of this as I'm praying for this person and something must have, ha there must be something from the past that is, you know, has knotted us up like this, but I'm just burning karma right now. And we have to be patient because sometimes karma takes time to burn out. But as long as we are, you know, tackling it with the positivity, with positive energy, we are not going down uh, in our energy and, you know, facing it head on. Uh, it's all good. It's all for the good. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That was very helpful. I also want to add what to what Rohan said that I actually, when we started this satsang, I saw that the sunrise hadn't yet happened. So the sky color was a deep dark blue. And now as you spoke, the light started coming out and we can see your beautiful altar and we can almost feel like we are there with you in your beautiful, beautiful. space. Yeah. So thank you for waking, like such an early morning for you. Thank you for being with us. You know, we were sharing with Diti, I'd like to share with all of you here. It, this, it was such a joy for us to be able to do this. You know, oh, that's all I can say. This was a great opportunity for us to be with all of you. I mean, what more can we ask for sharing master with our, with our fellow brothers and sister devotees? So All we can ask for more is to keep doing this more often. So <laughs> yes. whenever you want, we are here to serve and we are here <laughs> yes. to share the joy with you, with the rising sun behind us, master, you know, with us and <laughs> all of you together. We'd love that. We'd love that. I there's not nothing is better than these wonderful satsangs. Mm. Any other questions? We have a couple of minutes. We want to be sensitive to your time. It's getting late there, but we are here and we can be here as long as you guys want. But other questions, and then we'll get into a little um, prayer um, for the, the healing prayer for the world. So up to you guys if you have questions. Happy to answer. We didn't get a, quite a chance to see uh, everybody. So yeah, I'd like to get your names and uh, Hi, this all is that. Abhishek. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Hi, Abhishek. Hello, Abhishek. Hello. Hi. I loved uh, today's satsang and uh, the small things which I connected, on which I connected, so I loved it. Um, the peacock thing, especially, everyone, it, everyone was catching the attention there. But uh, that is something that even I wish for being around nature and with so many birds around. So thank you for that. My question to you is, on this path, you know there are certain things that you should not be doing. There are certain things that you should be doing. For example, the things that you should not be doing is alcohol or substance abuse or smoking or all these things. But your surroundings, as you said, do not allow you to get out of it. The resistance is very hard. 
so you cannot be fighting your friends your surrounding so much you can try to avoid but sometimes you try to indulge in it how do you create that thing that because your friends are very close to you they are good people but all these things take out that goodness out of them but then that point how do you come out of it even though you know that this is not nothing to do you are aware of it but yeah. still it's difficult sure. thank you abhishek that's a wonderful question and we all go through those uh, you know trials and tribulations ourselves so ramakrishna actually had a wonderful uh, quotation he said that when a sapling is a small you need to you know cover it with fences otherwise you know goats will come and eat the sapling right but at some point of time the sapling grows and becomes a big tree it gives a uh, shelter to others so when we talk about environment being stronger than the will it's a relative scale right we are all little saplings right so if you are surrounded by things which are distracting it's easy to pull you out so that's where you need to double down on the satsangs that's why i really need to double down on that firewall that really builds that strength in you and once you become that you know million watt bulbs bulb like you know padma was saying once the sun started coming up our light inside the house started dimming relatively right then you become the powerhouse that will actually attract the right minded people and provide some inspiration for others to uh, course correct so you cannot really fight this battle unless you yourself are strong right so example is that you know if you see somebody drowning and you want to help that person guess what you have to be an ace swimmer first right if you are not a swimmer you yourself will drown how can you save somebody else so it's important to understand that the emotional human connection that you are talking about is real so it is not prudent to fight it okay you cannot consume yourself into that uh, emotional uh, bandwidth because that will take you into a different direction that's there you want to keep it you want to nurture the love the affection the soil that i was talking about you need to nurture that aspect of that relationship but in the meantime you need to make yourself stronger with your practice the ashtanga yoga that patanjali talks about the yamas the niyamas the asana you know the pranayam the pratyahara dhyan dharana samadhi those are the things that you have to have a steadfast and disciplined dedication to that, that's your graduation course you know you need to have a degree right that's how you graduate once you get to the graduation yes you'll be able to uh, inspire others and you'll be able to help others is that helpful and if i can add to him uh, i'm going to quote master here i remember this uh, i think it was a hollywood actor or somebody he became master's disciple mm-hmm. and um you know he was an avid i think uh, drinker and a chain smoker and so um he he went to master and he said you know master i don't think i can give up my drinking or i i, I don't think i can give up my smoking uh, and he became a kriyaban and so guess what master told him I, he said i'm not going to ask you to give up anything but i cannot promise that you're going to continue to drink and smoke after a year of kriya so that's the power of kriya we don't have to actively go out and destroy our negativity when we build on our, on our positivity like the darkness automatically goes away so build focus on the light focus on the satsang cuz you yes you will need like arna was saying we are little tiny saplings now so don't get overwhelmed by you know whatever your circumstance is your your uh, environment is you have it in your control how the limited hours in your day how you are going to spend that that is in your control that is your will apply that make sure make a plan make a make a, a practical plan that okay every day i am doing these 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 like regiment in the beginning and then as you begin to taste that that taste of that good cheese you will lose your affinity to the bad cheese automatically it will happen i guarantee you that the desire to be desireless will uh, go away basically you know swami ji once asked master master i'm trying so hard you know i cannot concentrate and master said that's your problem you're trying too hard so don't try too hard just attune because the when you see it is easy and flowing it will automatically come and these desires you don't have to go and you know you don't you're not killing gnats with these desires you're replacing it right with other 
desires and it will just it's a natural process so it's over time we can we are loving this and we can be here and time flies when you have fun so it's up to you guys our day is just beginning and no i know you, you guys have had a whole day. i i have a small request can we do sure. this more often please sure 100% it is our nothing gives us more joy abhishek honestly nothing gives us more joy than sharing sharing master with everyone so anytime yeah. Yeah. we'll have you back very soon let's should we then end end up okay let's um, let's end with our healing prayer um yeah one thing you'll uh, notice uh, about our path is that everything is really simple you know everything you know even a second grader actually the second grader will probably understand more because they don't have the complication so our prayers are also simple <laughs> so let's uh, sit up straight uh was there a question somebody wanted to ask no okay uh sit up straight you know take all the wonderful memories that we created in this past hour and a half uh, feel the joy in our souls feel the relaxation feel the expansion feel master's blessings and all the gurus and the great saints are blessing us and let's uh, pray for the world let's share what we have like lights radiating uh, peace and joy into this world so the prayer goes like this o oh lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony okay so that's the prayer we'll say that 10 times i'll do the uh, 10 times you'll repeat after me followed by uh, padma will do it how we internalize that within ourselves okay so let's start lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill this world with peace and harmony peace and harmony and now we'll say Lord fill me with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill me with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill me with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill me with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill me with peace and harmony peace and harmony Lord fill me with peace and harmony peace and harmony And now visualize maybe anyone who's in need of prayers a friend relative maybe a stranger hold them up into the light visualize their eyes filled with divine love and light vitality see them protected by divine mother's love now expand that to include the entire world especially visualizing those pockets of unrest disharmony war 
seeing our beautiful blue planet flooded with Divine Mother's light, love, see peace and harmony reigning all over the planet and in everyone's heart. Let's pray, Divine Mother. Divine Mother. Thou art omnipresent. Thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all thy children. Thou art in all thy children. Manifest thy divine presence. Manifest thy divine presence. In all bodies. In all bodies. All minds. All minds. And in all souls. And in all souls. Let's rub our hands. Rub your hands vigorously, bringing in your heart's energy into your hands as we will work as lighthouses of light and love and peace and harmony. Now raise your hands above your head and take a deep breath. We'll chant Om three times. Om. For all bodies. For all minds. Continue to hold on to the light. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you all again. Have a blessed, beautiful rest of the evening. And yes, we are here anytime you want us, we are here at your service. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kodaparna. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Arnob. Thank you, Kodaparna. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening and the rest of your weekend. And we will definitely connect meet each other yes. soon. Yes. Thank you very much. You stay in touch and we will be back together soon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Blessings, everyone.